Good evening all and welcome to the NCARC TechNet. This is Kevin, November 7, Golf Echo Sierra, N7GES. <clears throat> we meet here each Monday evening at 6 p.m. local time to discuss technical issues uh, of amateur radio. This evening is an open forum for uh, any questions, so hope you're uh, hope you have uh, come with uh, plenty to ask, and uh, hope plenty of people are here to help out with those answers. Uh, you can ac access our uh, net through uh, the machines you're listening on: the uh, two seven five repeater, the seven seven five repeater, Echo Link, and our. Uh, uh, YouTube channel as well, where we're uh, live streaming. Um, questions for the net can be uh, addressed to Elmers at ncarc.net. Uh, that will accommodate uh, topic suggestions, questions for the net, or questions about the net. So uh, please feel free to uh, send that along. Let's take check-ins. Who have we got listening this evening? N7GES. This is 1DEG, Mike in Platteville. This is... Kilo Echo Zero, Lima, Charlie, Kilo, K-E-0-L-C-K, the other mic from Windsor. This is Kilo Echo Zero, Sierra, Oscar, Romeo, Mike, west of Wellington. Kilo Alpha Six, Echo, Tango, Echo, Jim, and Loveland. Okay, we'll uh, stop and acknowledge KA6ETE, KE0SOR, KE0LCK, K1DEG. Good evening, all. Who else is uh, wanting to check in this evening? Juliet Alpha, John, south of Livermore. Kevin, that was a perfect double with you and Luann checking in, her and Phil, K1DG. Okay. Well, I'm, that's interesting because I thought I had checked. Obviously, you can't always check. So let me, um, let me uh, pick up, first of all, John in Livermore, I didn't get any call sign except JA. Uh, sounds like you might have wires on, on your, your uh, Yesu radio, and it blotted out uh, everything but the uh, end of your call and the uh, uh, name and location. Can you come again and uh, uh, either turn off the wires or pause a little longer before you start speaking? Hotel Juliet Alpha. Okay, you still got wires on. I got Hotel Juliet Alpha this time. Key your mic and talk, uh, count to about five, and then uh, give me your call sign. I think that should do it. Whiskey Alpha 3, Hotel Juliet Alpha. That did it. WA3HJA. Good evening, John, and thank you for being patient there. Uh, if you uh, need some help on that, uh, uh, getting wires disabled, uh, let us know, because we uh, have had that situation come up numerous times. All righty, who else have we got this evening? N7GES. This is Kevin Kilo Niner Bravo Golf Uniform. Karen Mobile in Loveland. This is November Zero, 
Echo Mike Papa, Greg Fort Collins. This is KE Zero RXF, Randy Fort Collins. Right. And uh, apologies to uh, Luann and uh, and uh, Phil, uh, recognizing K0LAO and K0PRB, who I didn't actually hear, but were uh, relayed to me. Uh, and uh, thank you for checking in as well. And also uh, KE0RXF, N0EMP, and K9BGU. Very good. Anybody else this evening before we continue? Good evening, Kevin. This is Wiki Zero Alpha Sierra Papa, Terry in Berthoud. Okay, good evening, uh, Terry, W0ASP. Thank you for joining us. Anybody else before we start in? Okay. Uh, anybody's welcome to check in later if they wish. Uh, we just like to uh, start out with check-ins to kind of know who's starting out with us in, in the beginning here. So um, last week of the month, uh, I think we're going to try to remember to do uh, open forums routinely so we can uh, cover questions that uh, individuals may have. So uh, you can... Uh, kind of plan on that, and I will try to remember to be consistent at that, and that way if you have questions you want to address, uh, uh, even though there may be time at the end of a net session, which I do often uh, provide that as well, uh, there will be a, a predictable uh, week that we can set aside for open forum type questions. So. Uh, Let's begin this evening. Uh, who all would like to ask questions? Give me a call sign. I'll write it down and we'll come back to you and uh, try to uh, uh, make sure we get, we can get everybody in here. Um, John, uh, do you by chance need assistance with your uh, Yesu over there, or Yesu uh, equivalent, uh, WA3HJA? Uh, I'm looking at the uh, manual, trying to make sure I uh, turn it off. Um, it's a uh, FT6, it's just a handheld. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, if you don't find it, uh, give a holler. Uh, there are several people with FT6s uh, on here routinely, so uh, um, that should be easy enough to uh, get you some info on any, anyway. Somebody might even just supply it as they're, <laughs> as they're commenting on other things. So don't hesitate to let us know, and thank you for joining us. Okay, once again, any questions for the uh, open forum tonight? K zero LAO, wrong side of the radio.
Something like the hokey pokey. Pretty much. Um, just wanted to, if I can. Please do. Just a quick announcement. Um, we've set up uh, a kind of a gathering, and as many people know that we lost a very cherished member of our community, Mr. Mike Martinez. Uh, his birthday is on the 1st, so we have set up a gathering at Panhan the new Panhandler's Pizza on Saturday, November 3rd at 7 o'clock. Uh, the address is 2721 South College. And just to say, come put an eyeball on us and tell stories. So, you know, just to those of you that knew Mike well, those that you just met him, come listen to stories and um, celebrate a uh, life extraordinaire. Well, thank you, Luann. Uh, that sounds fantastic. Panhandlers is great anyway, and what a great uh, reason to uh, get together. So thank you very much. Yeah, uh, very special guy there, and he will be very much missed. So thank you for passing that along. Appreciate that. All right, other questions or comments or announcements for the Open Forum TechNet? W0ASP with a question. ASP, go ahead, Terry. This is a question for people who use some of the digital modes like the FT8 and JT65. And uh, you know, when they quote signal to noise ratios that they operate under, I still don't understand the basis of their quotation, and I was wondering if anybody had any more insight into how they come up with the numbers they come up with. Okay. We'll definitely need some help with that one. Is anybody else uh, able to uh, speak to that, the various digital HF modes? And the signal to noise uh, figures that they come up with, and how are those? What are those based on? And zero EMP. EMP, go ahead. Somebody that might have the answer to that is Glenn, N6GN, November 6th, Gulf November. Um, I think he's out of town for a few days. I think he's back Thursday, but he's on his email. Um, Terry, if you have, I think you may have his email. Um, he'd be, he'd be the person I would ask for that. He's, he's. Uh, retired HP engineer, and he is involved in Whisper and some of those other modes. Uh, Roger that. Yeah, I know Glenn. He uh, stopped by the shack uh, to take uh, some of that spectrum analyzer data off a of floppy disk for you. Um, I got a chance to talk to him for well over an hour. Uh, very educated man, very... Uh, fountain of wealth. Um, yeah, some of this comes from, you know, the creation of these digital modes and the ability to propagate at such low signal strengths really kind of has the scientific community in a bit of a quandary as to explain how the propagation is happening. That's very interesting. Because uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, 
I would have if I would have thought that was uh, fairly basic uh, information um, there, and uh, so I think what I what I'm hearing you saying is that the uh, the uh, the the values that are that are being reported are um, uh, unusual enough to make people uh, wonder how it's how it's happening. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct, Kevin. The um, the the. Uh, signal processing gain, if you will, on these digital modes is sufficient or sufficiently high that uh, it's picking up um, unusual or non-standard propagation modes. So the kind of stuff that uh, you normally get on uh, on sideband phone, um, you know, generally obeys normal propagation and normal ionosphere knowledge. Um, you know, to the extent that we know what's going on, but. The, uh, the propagation prediction is consistent with that. It's these other modes that can get the message through when the traditional propagation models and uh, propagation physics say that they shouldn't. Right. Well, that is very interesting. And uh, I don't know anybody else on here that has any comments to toward this subject, or uh, will we need to wait until uh, uh, we get somebody else around that can maybe go into more detail? But this is very fascinating. Double zero LEV with a comment. Okay, LEV, go ahead. Yeah, Terry and others, I cannot stick in here tonight, but I actually emailed uh, K1JT and asked him about the specifics. He was actually somewhat uh, put off by my question. Uh, the return email wasn't the kindest, but he did refer me to the write-up on the Stanford site about... Uh, JT65 at all. Uh, I have not read it, but supposedly it's there. Terry, I hear your same questions. <laughs> it's still a mystery to me. Uh, he said it's all there, but I haven't found it. W0LEV. Okay, uh, yeah, hi Dave, and uh, thanks for that. Um, yeah, I, I still think it has something to do with the actual bandwidth of each symbol being so very, very low. But um, uh, I said I can't confirm that. But what is interesting is that the, the widespread of these things by the amateur community is definitely raising the question, uh, what is the propagation mode? And to um, promote the whole cooperation between amateur radio operators and scientists, this is a, an area where um, the two groups can actually cooperate very fruitfully to figure out what's going on. Yeah, I hear your uh, biases, and I would like to know, too. I've read your, your comments, email, and a few others online with the standard, uh, because we're digging into the noise, the standard propagation uh, models, which is going to be the subject of next week's uh, TechNet, are not prevailing with these uh, really weak signals. But, well, there, my signal's back for some reason. I don't know, Terry. Uh, I would agree, but um, if you email them, expect a... Uh, Rather pointed, um, not so kind email in return. W zero L E V. Okay. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. E M P. Was that you? Yes, I might have a partial answer. Okay, go ahead. Um. 
speaking to these sound card modes in general, which includes all the whisper modes, the PSK, Olivia, all these other things, they're typically received on a USB receiver with about a two and a half kilohertz bandwidth, which is what you would use for voice. So if you look at the noise level, if the N in your signal to noise ratio comes from that two and a half kilohertz of bandwidth, but then the mode itself only uses a very thin slice of that two and a half kilohertz bandwidth. Uh, maybe only 31 hertz in the case of PSK31. In some of these other modes that are very slow, like Whisper, JT65, it may only use a few hertz of bandwidth. And the computer locks into that. It is like, it's like another filter to narrow the bandwidth down. So it's pulling data or information out of just a few hertz of bandwidth. And it's doing that through uh, digital signal processing. So if If you're taking a noise level out of the two and a half kilohertz of bandwidth, and then you're taking your signal level out of just a few hertz of bandwidth, it can look like you're receiving something that's way below the noise level, when in fact you're really not. Um, that that can be part of why, for instance, if you're listening with your ear to that whole two and a half kilohertz and you're not hearing anything and your computer is spitting out a conversation, that's what's happening there. And zero EMP. Use zero ASP follow up. Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, Greg, yeah, thanks for that explanation. And that makes sense to me, but it really isn't very technically accurate to compare a noise level across a broadband compared to a signal level across a narrow band. It's, um, to put it most kindly, it's comparing apples and oranges. Which is my exactly my point. I don't know if some of these quoted performance levels are doing that, comparing apples and oranges and give, giving what looks like phenomenal performance when that's not really the case. Um, you'd have to get into, hopefully, some of the uh, papers that they have on the Stanford site will explain in detail exactly where they're getting their numbers from. Yeah, because my understanding is the, tra the traditional, the correct engineering approach to describing something's uh, signal-to-noise ratio is to use uh, essentially equivalent filters for the noise and for the signal. And again, I don't know if that's what they're doing here or not. They should be in order to put out valid numbers. Now, it is interesting that these very slow uh, data modes are kind of reminiscent of what they've been doing with submarine communications for years, uh, VLF um, signals that can penetrate a certain amount of ocean, maybe 30, 40 meters of ocean water, and uh, get a signal, a very short signal, a very short message to a submarine that's submerged halfway around the world. And uh, that's very slow uh, mode, but it gets through. And uh, that was going on well before the sound modes uh, and JT65 and Whisper and things were ever around in zero EMP. Yeah, 
that, Greg. I was highly suspect in that application that there's quite a bit of redundancy, and uh, these other digital modes may in fact use that uh, feature as well, a lot of redundancy rather than just uh, uh, signal, signal to noise ratio, you know, processed or unprocessed. Um, that of course slows down the communication rate, but increases the reliability under what we'd normally consider to be a high bit error rate situation. Some of the modes use either time diversity or frequency diversity or both. So as they're, you know, you can have a mode that's wider, like a kilohertz wide, and it is resending the same bits in different parts of that one kilohertz of spectrum, and it's repeating them through the transmission. So there's a little frequency diversity and time diversity in the signal, and um, that can help with uh, forward error correction. Again, you know, you slow things way down and repeat, and you use a format that's self-correcting where it knows if there's an error and it can fill in the missing bits from another part of the received signal and rebuild it all back and error check it and everything else. I can see where that would be very handy, particularly where, where your noise floor is set, not by a white noise like um, atmospheric noise, but if you have interference, which tends to be band limited um, and can often be um, uh, changing in frequencies very quickly. But if your signal is also checking different frequencies, it may uh, occasionally come across frequencies and, t and short periods of time where there isn't noise on the channel and then therefore exploits that brief period of clear channel. So if you have something like a lightning strike or a pop from a electric fence sparking by having a little time diversity and repeating the message, um, it gets through between the pops. Oh, and I was specifically thinking of a lot of the buzz kind of interference that we hear on HF that's caused by uh, uh, wall warts and other malfunctioning power supplies. Well, those are fairly impulsive and they're not on most of the time. So, you know, in a, in a uh, voice application, you maybe use a noise blanker. Um, but digitally, you would just ignore those times when the noise was high and try to use those times or frequencies when the noise was low. comments on this. I've been hesitating because I've been writing like mad. This is interesting. <laughs> Further comments on this? This one may be, this one may be one we get comments back uh, after the fact, perhaps, and uh, that will be very interesting. So uh, we'll uh, certainly be looking for them anyway. Uh, to see uh, what may come up around there. But thank you for <clears throat> bringing the, uh, up the uh, questions and the comments. Um, any other comments on this or other topics for us tonight? This is N7GES with the NCARC TechNet.
And zero EMP, I have an announcement that's kind of related, partly, but it's also of general interest, I would hope. Please go ahead. So for those that don't know, my wife and I own some property northwest of Fort Collins um, at 7,500 feet, and we now have a HF receiver up there that's online. Thanks again to Glenn and 6GN, who we talked about a bit ago. Um, he is into a a system known as Kiwi SDR, K-I-W-I SDR, and this is a HF SDR receiver that's designed to be put online, and there's a server um, set up, and uh, the way the architecture is set up, eight people at a time can be connected to a receiver, and all eight people can pick some frequency anywhere in the whole 30, 32 megahertz of bandwidth and uh, listen to a signal um, and pick what mode they want to listen to, AM, upper, lower, side, band, CW, whatever. Um, a lot of people use these receivers as well for uh, as whisper beacon, reverse beacons for whisper. And... Uh, these things are all over the world. I'm looking, uh, it doesn't say on this page exactly how many people are there, but um, I can uh, tell people how to navigate to it. Okay, there's 313 receivers online right now throughout the world, counting the one that's up on our property. Uh, I'll let this reset and I can describe how to find it online in zero EMP. So the website where you can look at all these receivers is sdr.hu, sdr.hu, Hotel Uniform. And if you go to that website, uh, you'll see uh, a list, a very long list. But over on the right side, there's a box that says Receivers on a Map little globe and it says receivers on a map and if you click on that a map of the world comes up and when you expand it to full screen you can zoom in and pulling over to North America zooming in to Colorado um, there are two Kiwis in Colorado right now they both belong to Glenn and 6GN one of that is house in Fort Collins, the other is up on my property. And if you select one of those um, and click on the blue portion of it, um, the receiver pops up and there's a control panel interface and you can zoom around and zoom in, zoom out, change modes, change frequencies, and have all sorts of fun with it. Uh, that's a very RF quiet spot up there, and we're getting really good uh, performance out of the receiver up there and zero EMP. Okay. Oh, uh, is this a, is it considered a web SDR then? Uh, you, you access it without a client? Yes, very good point. I meant to say that and forgot. Yeah, you do not need any special software for this. I use uh, Firefox. Um, any any browser should work. It just comes up and your demodulated audio comes out through your speakers. Um, by default, it comes up showing a waterfall and there's on the control panel on the right side, there's a box that says SPEC, S-P-E-C. That stands for spectrum. And if you click on that, that'll add a spectrum display at the top of the screen. 
So at the top you have a spectrum display, and below that you have a waterfall. Uh, it's my favorite format, personally, for uh, display. There a blind mode to turn that off as well if you just want uh, audio data and nothing, uh, no visual? Um, well, you can turn the spectrum part of it off. I've never tried to turn off the waterfall, and I'm clicking around now. Doesn't look like that's an option. You can turn the demodulation off, so all you have is a waterfall. That wouldn't help you much. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look, doesn't look like that's an option. Uh, there is a box that says select band, and that will let you pick through all the different shortwave broadcast bands and through all the different amateur bands and some different maritime stuff if you want to uh, zoom in to something in particular without manually entering it. Um, that, that can be useful. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's certainly something I will be trying out, so thank you for the info. Does anybody else have questions on this? This is very, uh, very interesting, too. DEG comment. DEG go. I've been using that to uh, hear the net control for the high noon net a lot. Uh, different ones work a whole lot better, but that same premise, same idea. And uh, between the two that N6GN has up, uh, the one at Rattlesnake I can hear me on. The one at his house I cannot hear myself. So it will assist with uh, situations as the uh, checking into the high noon net and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, many of our net controls have been using them to, to help with the uh, poor propagation and uh, give a little better uh, a little better chance at receiving. So, uh, very good. Well, thank you, uh, Greg, for the info. I look forward to giving that a try and seeing if I can uh, <clears throat> navigate my way through it. Uh, that's very, very interesting. Okay, any other comments on this before we move on? This is N7GES in the NCARC TechNet. I can give you the uh, direct URL, which is what you go to when you go through the map and pick on, click the icon and everything. So I can give you the direct URL to, the, to that site, uh, Kevin, and anyone else that wants it. I'm going to go ahead and just do it in here. Yes. It'll be N6GN, that's November 6, Gulf November, dot N0, or not N0, I'm sorry, dot NO dash IP dot org. So that's N6GN dot NO dash IP dot org, colon 8074. And his other site here in town, in Fort Collins, is 8073. The one up on our property up at elevation is 8074. Okay, and so that passes the, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, bypasses the uh, SDR.HU uh, URL then, huh? Right. It looks like, I'm not quite sure on all the architecture yet, but it looks like that SDR.HU site is kind of a, a clearinghouse of what receivers are currently online. But it looks like each one has its own unique link, and what that website does is just serves you a link, and then you go there. Uh, that seems to be how it works. OK, 
Okay, N7GES and the uh, TechNet, um, fascinating. So tonight, uh, so far, we've talked um, the uh, signal and noise uh, uh, measurement uh, criteria for the uh, various HF digital modes and um, the online Kiwi SDR uh, which is uh, newly up at uh, Greg's uh, new property in a very, very nice uh, high and noise-free location, uh, as well as the uh, <coughs> little uh, birthday party for our uh, silent key friend, uh, KF0CB. Any other uh, questions on any of these topics or any other uh, additional topic questions that anybody would like to ask? W0ASB. Matt Terry. I'd uh, like to ask Greg uh, how he's powering his uh, instrumentation there and uh, what his plans are to keep that a noise free environment. Well, if you look right now at the waterfall, you'll see we have a noise issue. That's from our own equipment. Uh, he is using a 5-volt switching supply, and we're seeing noise about every 136 kilohertz, although we've, we're going to replace that power supply. But there's a 235-watt uh, solar panel that... Um, goes through a charge controller to charge a 155-amp-hour flooded lead-acid battery, which is buried underground in the hopes that it won't freeze this winter. And then that powers a ubiquity microwave link down into Fort Collins because there's no Internet up there. So it powers the ubiquity microwave link on 5 gigahertz, and it powers the uh, Kiwi SDR and a Bodnar um, GPS reference because it's, uh, this receiver is uh, locked to that. And the whole thing draws 700 milliamps, so uh, at 12 volts on the 12 volt side of things. And uh, there is some noise right now, and uh, we're, we're going to mitigate that uh, with a better 5-volt switching supply. And then as other equipment is installed for NCARC up there, uh, it's already in the contract that um, it can't cause uh, interference and zero EMP. Oh, very good, Greg. Thank you for that insight. Uh, as you uh, probably noticed, it's going to be a challenge, and uh, I'm glad you're starting with a clean slate and can keep on top of the noise uh, issues. W0ASP, back to that. This is fantastic, and uh, yes, thank you for bringing it up here. This is very appropriate. N7GES, other comments or questions on this topic or others, please? Well, John, I'm dying of curiosity. Did you have good results with your uh, manual hunt there? WA3HKA, yeah, I uh, figured it out. Sorry about that. No, not at all. Uh, yes, you did figure it out, and uh, I'm just glad to hear that you did it. It's uh, uh, That function is... Uh, uh, <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't know what made the made Yesu think it would be a a a, a, a useful function when it uh, disrupts conversation and doesn't let you even know that it's uh, doing it. But um, I, you know, I always try to let people know right away so that they aren't confused because they're not getting messages through. So anyway, good. Glad you got that uh, out of your hair. And uh, sorry to keep bugging you about it, but uh, just curious. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this is my first TSO in 50 years. Uh, things have changed from when I used to be on the air. So um, I'm just kind of figuring things out as I go. Thanks. Well, congratulations on uh, wading through the um, tech cesspool <laughs> sometimes and uh, getting back on and uh, uh, glad you're here and welcome anytime. Uh, very good to have you. Okay, anything else? Any other comments, questions, uh, announcements, anything for the uh, NCART TechNet? This is November Zero, Whiskey, India, Quebec, and I'm just checking in for now because I haven't heard anything I can contribute to. Okay, Carrie, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, anybody else? Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar X-Ray Victor, Scott Fort Collins for a late check-in. Yeah, good evening, Kevin. Good evening, Ned. Good evening, Scott, and nice to have you as well. Thank you very much. Okay, any other check-ins or questions or comments, please? Well, then, uh, we'll uh, uh, suggest that we've probably called, uh, uh, covered things well, um, and some interesting topics there, too. Keep in mind that we're going to try to do this once a month, so if you have questions that you'd like to hear more discussion on, uh, this would be a good time to do it. Last uh, Monday of the month, at least for now, and then we'll see if we need to make it more or less often. Next week, uh, for any of you folks that are techs and uh, interested in in studying up on uh, uh, the next level, and especially getting into HF, the uh, basics of HF propagation, including the DEF uh, layers and what it all does. And I have invited several folks to be here to give some uh, descriptions and answer questions. Uh, these, are, these are questions that come up uh, again and again, so it never hurts to uh, uh, have a chance to hear about it uh, explained again and sometimes pick up basics that you've studied but have forgotten. Um, uh, so uh, do please uh, be here if you can and uh, make use of the knowledge pool that uh, will probably be here and uh, take good advantage of that uh, and uh, hopefully that if you haven't done HF before uh, this this will also whet your appetite because uh, don't think of it as uh, being um, why you can't make a connection between here and there but how can you better make a connection between here and there uh, and uh, and um, and how to maximize all of that. So it should be an interesting discussion, uh, a basic discussion, but still an important one for anyone that's uh, that's doing anything beyond uh, VHF and UHF, and which is where some of the uh, communications really, really, really get interesting. So. Uh, uh, hopefully this will be a, a fantastic topic for everybody, including the, the folks that have been in for a long time, 
who already know the basics but uh, get to either pick up something they've uh, um, they've uh, kind of forgotten about or hadn't thought about or have something presented in a different way or get to present something for everybody else to uh, to uh, latch on to. Good, important stuff there. So, uh, again, email us at uh, Elmer's Echo Lima Mike Echo Romeo Sierra at ncarc dot net. Someday I'm going to be able to spout that off without having to pause in between each and every letter, but it hasn't come yet. <laughs> um, uh, ask questions uh, that you'd like to see posed or topics you'd like to see posed um, or ask questions about the net and how it functions and remember that the nets are uh, are uh, streamed to YouTube and they're, therefore they're available for review at your pleasure on our YouTube channel thank you again uh, everybody for providing information and questions and we'll uh, close this for today. 73s to all, and thank you very much. This is N7GES. Uh, the repeater is now open for normal use. Good evening, all, N73. This presentation was brought to you by the Northern Colorado Amateur Radio Club. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.